Welcome to part two on the module discussing patterns and frameworks for concurrency and synchronization. In the previous part of this module, we talked about the active object pattern. Now we're going to describe the ACE task framework, which can be used to implement the active object pattern, as well as other patterns for concurrency. The classes in the ACE task framework provide a producer-consumer concurrency model that can be used to associate one or more threads of control with a message queue and other state associated with a service or an application object, such as methods, fields, other kinds of data. Typically, application classes will inherit from the ACE task base class, override its methods, and these methods are then called back by the ACE task framework in order to be able to decouple the thread in which invocations are made from the thread in which these invocations are actually executed in one or more threads of control. Naturally, the, the classes in this particular framework are guided in part by the active object pattern and related patterns. Let's talk about some of the various classes that are part of the ACE task framework. One of the first classes we'll discuss is something called the ACE message block, which is essentially a composite that allows you to put together messages made out of building block parts that can be chained together for various types of efficient encapsulation and de-encapsulation of messages that may end up uh, flowing across networks, for example. Another capability in this framework is the ACE message queue class, which is essentially a doubly linked list of ACE message blocks that can be used to enqueue and dequeue messages either in a synchronized way between multiple threads or simply used as a regular message queue within one thread of control. The next part of this is something called the ACE Thread Manager, which is a helper class that can be used to portably spawn one or more threads of control on different operating system environments. And then the last piece in this framework is something called the ACE Task class itself. And this is the primary unit that's used to be able to queue messages, run various service processing operations concurrently, and provide a vase class for subclasses to inherit and customize its hook methods, fill an additional state, and in general run things in a concurrent, various concurrent models. Take a look at this URL for more information about ACE task. And of course, this also appears in the book on C++ network programming with ACE and frameworks. So let's talk now about the ACE task class itself. We'll talk about the ACE message queue class later. Uh, the ACE task class brings together a number of different things. It has a message queue that can be used to decouple data and requests that come in from one thread from the time when they're processed and the thread in which they're processed by some other thread or threads later. You can take an ACE task object and you can activate it, which means one or more threads will then start to run and these threads, threads can then run in the background and process the requests that come to them via the message queue. The hook methods that ACE task provides can be selectively overridden in order to be able to handle various application or service specific concurrency and queuing disciplines and models. By inheriting from a service object, which in turn inherits from ACE event handler, you can use instances of ACE task both to be linked dynamically as well as to be run by callbacks reactively from the reactor. And we'll see how we use this a little bit later when we generalize the application of this framework to other more complex concurrency patterns. From a commonality and variability point of view, an ACE task essentially hides the variability of concurrent processing and queuing by a common API with a certain set of templates and a certain set of, of hook methods that you override and customize in various ways. Let's talk a bit about each of these hook methods. There are four of them that are important to understand. The first method is, is very simple. It's the open method, and it's essentially a form of a virtual constructor. And it's used to be called to initialize an ACE task when it starts to run. And the most common thing it does is it turns around and calls activate in order to convert the object into an active object. And I'll show you how that works in just a moment. Another very important method for ACE task is the put method. And this method is used to pass a message 
from someplace else, perhaps another ACE task, perhaps some other part of the software, like the reactive layer, for example, and pass that message to the task, and then the task can figure out what to do with it. It might choose to perform the work immediately, or it might choose to enqueue the work and then run it later in its service method. The service method typically runs in one or more threads of control that execute in the background as part of the active object pattern. And these service method calls will wait for work to show up on the message queue, which is synchronized. And when work shows up, perhaps being put there by someone else, then it, the service hook method removes the message, figures out what the work request is, performs the work, and then perhaps goes back to waiting for the next message to show up on the message queue. The final hook method we'll talk about here is the close method. Uh, its purpose is simply to be called back when the thread executing the service hook finishes, and it gives a chance to clean up anything that might need to be cleaned up. You will have as many calls to close as there are threads that are running the service methods as part of the active object. And there's some mechanisms you can use to figure out whether you're the, the last hook method to be called, uh, the last close method to be called when the last thread exits from the active object. Let's talk now about how you actually go about activating an ACE task. So when you call the activate method to make it become an active object, several things happen. First, let's talk briefly about when this might occur. Uh, we'll talk shortly about the thread per connection, or TPC, HTTP handler. And that's going to use activate to create a single thread of control for every connection and every get request that comes to the server. Later, we'll also talk about another variant uh, in our pattern language. It's the thread pool HTTP task, which will be part of the half sync, half async solution. In this case, we actually spawn a pool of threads, perhaps eight threads, which we can also use through Activate. So Activate gives us tremendous flexibility to spawn different numbers of threads that will run in the background in an active object. When you call Activate, what actually happens under the hood is that it uses some mechanisms available in ACE. It goes ahead and uh, calls the ACE thread manager spawn method. And that, in turn, will reach down into the low-level operating system portability layer and call whatever OS-specific thread creation routine is needed, which, in turn, will create a stack to run the thread on. And passed into that, that thread function will be the address of the task itself. The thread start function is something called service run. And as you can see here in this particular diagram, what service run does is it plays the role of an adapter to take the task object that's passed in and then call its service hook method back in a new separate thread of control. So that's how you make things run actively. Naturally, it's quite easy to port this particular abstraction to other platforms, which is already done for you, of course, by ACE. So you can easily port this to run on POSIX. You can port it to run on VXWorks, other environments that have different models for threading. It's also worth just noting briefly that this way of doing things is not unlike the way that Java threads work. In Java threads, you call start on a thread in order to be able to create a new thread under the hood. And then its run method is called. Likewise, with ACE tasks, you call activate on an ACE task object, and that creates a new thread or threads. And then you can have their service hook methods called on that object. The main difference between a Java thread and an ACE task is an ACE task can spawn a pool of threads as opposed to one thread. And secondly, an ACE task can also have a message queue associated with it, so it can process and store those requests and do various kinds of patterns, like active object or half sync, half async. So to summarize this particular discussion about the ACE task framework, it provides a nice extensible object-oriented concurrency capability that can spawn threads in the context of an object. So it's an object-oriented concurrency model. And then it allows you to be able to transfer and queue messages between the different threads. You can use this particular framework for various things. We're going to focus first on using it for active objects where we're trying to decouple the thread that invokes an operation from the thread that runs the operation. <clears throat> and we'll be using a subset of the full-blown active object pattern to do this, because that's going to give us just the features we need without incurring additional complexity or overhead. And then later, in a different part of this module, we'll come along and show how we can use the ACE task object-oriented concurrency model 
for a more sophisticated concurrency pattern called half sync, half async. And this will allow some parts to remain uh, synchronous or reactive, and then we'll be able to connect those things up with the various threads in a pool of threads managed by an active object. So you'll get a chance to see this framework in a couple of different contexts.